And you're listening to Potion 203, the world's R&B experience, brought to you by the World Space Satellite Radio Network. I'm Greg Dixon. I am so thrilled to have on the telephone with me today the legendary, the one and only Gladys Knight. How you doing, Gladys? Hey, Greg. How are you? I am fine. I am so thrilled to be talking to you. You know I'm your biggest fan. Hey, I'm, I'm the same with you. I am, hey, so grateful to be talking to you. It's been a while. You know when you don't see people for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, well, it's wonderful. Well, let me just say congratulations, first of all, for all your recent success. You won your seventh Grammy Award this year. How about that? <laughs> I'm always surprised. And you were honored by BET with their Lifetime Achievement Award. How about that? And you have a brand new album out. That's right. But first, before we talk about any of that, let me talk about your incredible performances on Celebrity Duets. Oh, did you say that? Oh, did I? How could I possibly <laughs> miss that? You were the highlight of the show. Seriously, you really were. I was just curious, how did you get involved with the show? Well, you know, they are produced by the people that back American Idol. Mm -hmm. And when I was a judge on that show, we became really, really, really fast friends, almost a family, you know. And um, when they got ready to do this show, they called us and, um, you know, said, we'd love for you to do this show. And I'm always excited about being involved with talent. It's just something that I have wanted to do for a long I know I'm going to get to my school one of these days. <laughs> but when it comes down to helping people in the industry, whether it be they a celebrity or be they newcomers, then that just tickles my heart for some reason, and I always enjoy doing it. Okay, now one of the songs that you performed on the show that you were absolutely just incredible was Since I Fell For You. Yeah. Which is featured on your brand new CD, which is entitled Before Me. That's right. Now this album is a jazz album. I listened to it and I love it. Thank you so much. I was nervous about it. I said, now they gonna hate me. But I got to just tell them a little musical history about us. I hear you. You know, our African-American family, our people, um, it's up to us to keep our history alive. And these are some great ladies. They're great men out there, too. I thought I'd start right with the ladies. Okay. But this is a tribute to some of the women who influenced you. Yes, that came before me that opened these doors. I'm telling you, if it had not been for them, we may not have hip-hop today. And we're talking about, like, Ella Fitzgerald. Ella Fitzgerald. Now, you may think that's crazy, because these jazz people, you know? Right. But I'm telling you, what they did for the music industry and the things that they endured to keep a, a realness and, and a trueness to the music. And jazz is one of the oldest forms of music ever. It prepared us for what we're doing today. Ella Fitzgerald, Sarah Vaughn, Lena Horne, Nina Simone, all of those great, great, great women. Mahalia Jackson even though she's gospel. It's so interesting to me because I look at you and I see how many people are influenced by you. And to have you give credit to all of the people who have inspired you and influenced you, I think that's just phenomenal. Well, thank you so much. You know, uh, my heart is just so full of them because I got a chance to see them and know them, all except Billie Holiday. And um, they got a chance to tell me their stories like I'm telling you mine. And uh, it was an amazing journey for them. Some of the things they suffered and some of the things that um, were uplifting and the status they eventually achieved, you know, was right. simply amazing. Now, in your autobiography, Between Each Line of Pain and Glory, uh -huh. you credit your high school band director, Lloyd Terry, for teaching you how to sing jazz. That's right. How much of his influence is reflected on this album? Abs absolutely all of it. Wow. That's Absolutely incredible. all of it, because that's where the idea was born. Wow. Uh, going through high school, this is the music that I sang. Being in school, the Pips and I couldn't continually build like we had started to. My mom and dad weren't hearing that. <laughs> it's like you go going to school, it ain't about no tutor. You know, we weren't, we weren't uh, uh, big time like that. <laughs> 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 no, we had to do the normal <laughs> things, you know. So during our school times, you know, like we couldn't go out on the road and do all that stuff. So this was an opportunity that came into uh, my life that my mom and dad said that it would be okay for me to embrace. So I started with him and he made me study before uh. I sang with the band. You know, we did some of the pop stuff that was around that day, but basically they were jazz 
you know, quartet. They were a jazz group. And so I had to study Ella Fitzgerald and Nina Simone and Billie Holiday and, and Oscar Peterson and Cannibal Adderley wow. and all these people. Okay, now let's go back to the beginning uh-huh. where you got your big break. Everybody knows that you were on Ted Mack's original Amateur Hour, and you won when you were eight years old. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay, now I was always curious because at eight years old, did you have any idea how big of a deal that was? I mean, because that's like winning American Idol or Star Search today. I kn- how about that? <laughs> I had no clue. I had no clue whatsoever. My mom never presented things to us like on that level. Right. You know, it was her keeping us busy doing something that she could kind of envision that we enjoyed doing. I didn't mind singing. I didn't crave singing. I didn't I didn't look to say, well, I want to sing. That wasn't me. It was just something that I saw that my parents felt I could do, and I wanted to be obedient. You know, that's the way I was raised. So, yes, I enjoyed doing it, and, you know, I never thought about it. I just did it i was i wanted to play i wanted to be out in the in the yard with the rest of the kids and most of the time that's what i did wow now one of the things you also wrote in your book and i was a little shocked by this um you talked about your first meeting with aretha franklin and how you (laughs) you were she has has not forgiven me for that (laughs) but i thought it was interesting because you said how you you extended your hand to her and you said hello and she ignored you and then you were at the grammys and you spoke to her at the grammys and she ignored you and in the quote from your book you said and this is a quote she could sing it she could spell it but she wasn't interested in giving me any respect now are you any closer today or what is your relationship like with aretha now you know what um I never withdrew from her, and I've always tried to reach out. But, you know, someone, you have to allow them to grow to you right, exactly. sometimes, you know. And I call her every once in a blue moon, you know. I mean, we were close at one at one point. We both lived in Detroit, you know, and that kind of thing, and we kept close to contact. But as we grew, uh, she just kind of got away from me, you right. know what I mean? And I've been waiting all this time for us to do something together, and I still want to do something with her. That would be incredible. Well, hey, come on, <laughs> that man. That would be incredible. When I saw you on Oprah with Patty and Aretha, and that was like one of the most incredible shows I've ever seen, to have the three of you together, you know. That's why I was a little surprised to find out that all the stuff was going on. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been longing for that for the longest time. Wow. I may try to call her. <laughs> <laughs> When well, we get through with this call, I'm going to get somebody to find her number for me, <laughs> and I'm going to call her behind. 